the smoke cleared after AEW's first pay-per-view effort Double or Nothing, the consensus choice for best match was the one pitting Cody Rhodes against 50-year-old brother Dustin, and that certainly wasn't mercy from the audience, it was a genuine classic. Achieving a match with that level of greatness is challenging for any wrestler, but for a man who wrestled in New Generation era WWE to be achieving that in 2019 opened many eyes. The former Gold Dust is far from the only WWE talent from the bygone New Generation and early Attitude era that still brings the goods in 2019 well into their 40s or 50s or even beyond. Our nostalgic hearts get a little kick out of seeing the wrestlers of our youth still going strong in the latter day, and this list will call attention to some of those individuals, a few of whom you may not have even known were still wrestling. And while a few grizzled veterans put in the occasional indie headliner appearance, this video is for a special breed that wrestles a little more often than most, the elder WWE alumni that may just be tireless. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic.com, and these are 10 former WWE superstars that are still wrestling today. Join us! Number 10, Quebeca Pierre. Let's start with the obvious one, shall we? As evidenced by some responses to previous videos that have made reference to the man known today as PCO, a number of you were floored that the stout-bodied French Frankenstein who bumps like an exuberant cruiserweight was the same man who won three WWE World Tag Team titles with Jacques Rougeau in the mid-90s. And it's not like Pierre was only 10 years old back then, either. Pierre Carlouillet turned 51 years old before the end of 2018, and his character's imperviousness to pain and decay may actually apply to the man himself. He wrestles a relatively full schedule through his employment with Ring of Honor as part of Villain Enterprises, and in 2019 alone captured ROH's World Tag Team, Six Man Tag Team, and even NWA World Tag Team titles while dropping regular vignettes of himself staying in shape through masochistic training methods. PCO claims not to be human, and from the looks of things, that might be a shoot. Number 9, Shane Douglas. Calling Shane Douglas a former WWE star is kinda like calling Triple H a former WCW performer, when they're a bit more synonymous with another promotion. The franchise was a cornerstone of extreme championship wrestling, cutting obscenity-laced promos, entering to Deep Purple's Perfect Strangers, and selling every opponent's offense with borderline teary-eyed gusto. You can still see all of those same things in 2019, because Douglas, at age 54, keeps on trucking. In this year alone, Douglas has wrestled upstart MJF, who wasn't born until after Douglas' infamous stint as WWE smug and smarmy Dean. Other opponents in 2019 have included Steve Carino's son Colby, Jock Samson, and he also wrestled in a six-man tag for Luke Hawks' Wildcat Wrestling that included fellow ECW alumni C.W. Anderson and Stevie Richards. Douglas has officially been wrestling since 1982, which is before every single Cultaholic employee was born, and here he is today, still demanding the production guy to cut his effing music. Number 8, S.A. Rios. This one is a little easier to believe, seeing as the man only turned 40 in December of 2018. At WrestleMania 14 in early 1998, Jim Ross did inform the audience that Rios, then known as Agula, was only 19 years of age at the time, making him probably the youngest person to work a WrestleMania match until referee John Cone's son single-handedly kicked Sheamus and Cesaro's asses 20 years later. Rios continues to wrestle today in his native Mexico, freelancing for numerous promotions, including one occasion in January where he teamed with fellow well-traveled luchador Juventud Guerrera. He also takes a number of indie bookings stateside, and was even an entrant in Joey Janela's Greatest Cluster F Battle Royal this past WrestleMania weekend. Number 7, Hakushi. Sometimes older wrestling doesn't hold up, because the newer stuff is so state-of-the-art that it yellows what used to be considered superior. However, that statement does not apply to the matches pitting Hakushi against Bret Hart in the spring and summer of 1995, because if they happen today, the collective smartgasm would flood all of us into a Waterworld scenario. Point being, a quarter century ago, Hakushi was a revelation for WWE fans who had never seen somebody move quite like that before. Today at 52, Hakushi keeps busy, wrestling primarily for Mishinoku Pro, where in June he competed in a six-man tag that included fellow junior heavyweight old guarders Dick Togo and Ultimo Dragon. Other promotions that he's graced in 2019 include DDT Dramatic Dream, Zero One, and Pro Wrestling Noah. Number 6, Savio Vega. 
More than 20 years have passed since Savio Vega last performed inside a WWE ring, and his near five-year tenure with the promotion gets overlooked at times. That is a bit of a shame, because Vega really was one of the more underappreciated wrestlers in a very lean time period for the company. For evidence of what Vega was capable of, check out his brutal Caribbean strap match with Steve Austin from May 1996. It is a forgotten classic. Vega's kept busy in the two decades since his WWE departure, mostly in his native Puerto Rico, where he's continued to wrestle for the IWA promotion into this year. He's also wrestled in AIW's JT Lightning Memorial Tournament in June, facing rising stars the likes of MJF and Mance Warner. As of this recording, Vega is scheduled to debut for Major League Wrestling at their New York City tapings on Thursday, July 25th, which take place just weeks shy of his 55th birthday. Number 5. Billy Gunn if you saw AEW's Casino Battle Royal at Double or Nothing, you likely came to a few conclusions. Having a cigarette stapled to your forehead has to suck, Adam Page is star material, and Billy Gunn is still going to look like a million bucks when he's 80 years old. The smoking gun's mullet and moustache may be long gone, but badass Billy hasn't changed all that much from his time as a New Age outlaw. Now a producer for All Elite Wrestling, you'd think that the 55-year-old Gunn's in-ring activity might have curtailed a bit, but he's stayed quite active so far in 2019. Over the past three months alone, Gunn's wrestled in places like New York, Ontario, Vegas, North Carolina, and England for promotions such as House of Hardcore, World Association of Wrestling, and of course AEW. In late 2018, Gunn even teamed with 24-year-old son Austin at an independent event in Maryland. That is how you know time is truly passing quickly, when stars of the Attitude Era are working tag matches with their adult children. Number 4. Gangrel And now a moment of appreciation for the individual with the coolest ring entrance of all time. We all not so secretly wanted to rise from the pit of open flame while ominous music and blood-red lighting filled the airspace. And let's admit it, we've all wasted perfectly good fruit punch flavored Gatorade by trying to spew it for distance, haven't we? Point being, Gangrel left his mark on the impressionable youth of the world, the vampire we all aspired to be. At age 50 today, Gangrel continues to inspire, toting that familiar chalice of crimson with him up the ring steps of many an independent show. Though he mostly wrestles in the Florida area these days, Gangrel does venture outward, performing two shows in Alberta back in May, and worked a pair of matches in the New York area on WrestleMania weekend. Attitude Era enthusiasts in Dania, Florida had to be thrilled back in February when Gangrel teamed with Billy Gunn, presumably they were known as Bite You in the Arse, to defeat the headbangers for his own promotion, Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum. Number 3. Taka Mishinoku in 1997, WWE's attempt to counterpunch WCW's cruiserweight division was by creating a haven for light heavyweights to thrive. The great Suzuki was set to be the face of this ambitious division, but when he and WWE quickly parted ways, young Taka stepped in to be the star. His hands-free running springboard dives left everyone in awe, as WWE had a tremendous foundation for its juniors group, which it sadly lost interest in as 1998 wore on. No fault of Taka's, though. At 46 years of age, Taka works an incredibly busy schedule, already performing in over 50 matches in 2019 alone. The majority of these bouts have been for New Japan Pro Wrestling, which include a run in the Best of the Super Juniors tournament, as well as numerous tag team bouts as part of Suzuki Gun. Taka also wrestled his first match on the United States mainland in over 17 years back during WrestleMania weekend, when he faced the downbeat Orange Cassidy as part of Joey Janela's Spring Break events. Number 2. Scott Steiner to have seen Scott Steiner wrestle in the early 90s, when he was less muscular and sported the same windblown mullet as Dave Meltzer, was to have seen perhaps the most incredible wrestler on planet Earth. Imagine the agility of Shelton Benjamin, the raw power of Jeff Cobb, the natural sadism of Volta, and the punishing offense of Brock Lesnar, each possessed a 250-pound man. We still have no idea how in the hell he did that Frankensteiner, or even how he made it look so easy. The Steiner younger fans know better is the boastful bully with many unintentional catchphrases, and while he's not the same athletic marvel at 56, he still enters the ring to appease his freaks the world over. In 2019, Steiner's worked with the likes of Nick Gage, Chris Dickinson, and Joey Ryan, while also wrestling Hornswoggle on WrestleMania weekend. In April, he even teamed with Brother Rick in a match for an independent promotion in Missouri. Big Papa Pump did like to brag about his endurance, and he's proving it to be true, at least in the wrestling sense. Number 1. Jerry the King Lawler 
After infamously suffering a heart attack during an episode of Raw in September 2012, and quite frankly miraculously surviving it, it was hard to imagine a then 62-year-old Lawler ever setting foot inside a ring again. WWE has understandably not allowed Lawler to wrestle for them since, but he's continued to don the one-strap tights anyway. Since May of 2013, Lawler has performed in about 60 matches, an average of 10 per year. As he approaches his 70th birthday in November 2019, the King shows no signs of stopping. So far in 2019, Lawler has wrestled six matches, including four in the month of April for different promotions. In 2018, he wrestled nine bouts throughout the year, one of which saw him partner up with Ryback at a Six Flags in Jackson, New Jersey. Having made his debut in 1970, should Lawler wrestle at any point in 2020, he will have officially been an active wrestler for 50 years. Hopefully Andy Kaufman comes out of hiding by then so that we can finally get that long-awaited rematch. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.